Hey guys, how's it going? Hollywood Bomber, episode 21. 46 degrees out today. Winter has uh, come back to Texas. We had snow a couple days ago. About an inch. Lasted for a couple hours. Nothing really big. Um, anyway, that's what's going on. We're going to try to finish up some engine stuff. Finish up the elevator. Finish up the other rudder structurally. Get that done. Um, getting a bunch of stuff uh, knocked out. We are supposed to have some bad weather coming in next week. Keep our fingers crossed. We'll see how that goes. But uh, that's about it. Here we go. Let's go to the hangar. Don't mind the banging noise. That's, uh, <laughs> that's Terry from Florida. Darren, what are you doing, brother? We're buttoning up more stuff for this engine. I got an old primer line we're trying to get in, and we have some pieces of sheet metal that surround things associated with the carb heat. Uh, we got box, box covers. The last two went on today. So this engine is completely sealed. We can pressure wash the top of it. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's got some gunk that needs to be cleaned out. Yeah, so the cool. goal is to get it sealed off the top to where we can uh, get, get, the, the get the medallion off the bottom. That's cool. Yeah. And, and we then got the exhaust thing we found today that we have to address. Yeah, big, big hole. So we're gonna have to. We we like to weld that in place. Hopefully. So yes. we're gonna have to get somebody to weld that. But uh, anyway, they're getting. Uh, he and Bill are getting this all cleaned up here. Get that. Uh, fuel primer line which is a brand new line but it's a bigger line so it's a woolly bugger to get in there huge but hopefully hopefully they'll get it in there. Okay, back to work let me go find out what the banging is yeah do that busy day today busy day let's see what gary's doing oh hold on james is over here let's check this out Wait, <laughs> he's, he's too quiet we think he's up to something okay gary what do you do? hey that's never been on before what's going on i don't know i'm putting a cover on this uh <laughs> This little tail. Cool so that's that is that whole area is done, cleaned, and the cover plates are on. They're all torque sealed. All the cover plates on the aft horizontal stabilizer are done. All these are on. Uh, we only have one plate off here. We got to get the to sort that out. But that is pretty well done. And Terry Terry is banging on fuel cell stuff, but we'll go talk to him. So and that's gonna probably fit like something. Like stocks on a rooster, but you can see here's the old paint job, the old white paint job. When Merv had it, when Merv had it, it was white. Right. And then sometime after that, somebody put the tan paint. I think this is the 80s earth tones. So, anywho, okay, Gary's going to be very frustrated very shortly, so we're going to get away from him before he throws me. You won't let it. <laughs> you won't. Okay. Okay, let's see what, let's see what Chris is doing. Don't mind Terry banging on part of the airplane he's removing nut plates okay Chris what are you doing we are putting the last of the covers uh, valve covers on the number two engine yeah, and these are miserable because it's got there's an extra hose I'm gonna do a zoom in here do, 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 do. there's an extra hose here and extra clamps all jammed together just crazy so Chris is fighting the fight which is absolutely miserable but and oh by the way we took the medallions off we have a surprise for you there it's gonna be totally cool so anyway um, yeah this is another job we're going to Get away from Chris because this will try his patience. <laughs> okay, we're gonna see what Terry's up to. He's been all that noise that's been banging on earlier. Okay, man. All right. <laughs> Again, Terry. Rusty Terry. Nut plates he popped in. Well, you popped in last week for from Florida just because. And now he popped in again from Florida. Just because. Just because. I and we. Be yeah. And I noticed. We'll, we'll, t we'll give you a shot. Look at this. See that? See that? That's Terry's buddy Joe. You know what Joe's doing? George. George. You know what George is doing? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> George is good at PR. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So what are you doing up here? You're making all, a whole bunch of noise. All the nasty rug plates, nut plates. I got the rivets out last week. Yeah. But now the... The, the shank and the bolt or yeah, screw or whatever. rusted. It's bigger. Yeah. So now it needs some convincing. Sorry about the noise. So he's getting, but he's getting them all out, and then what we'll do tomorrow or the next day, or whatever, we'll Place start, we'll start stuffing them, and then if we get them stuffed, we can just go in with a squeezer and bang them out. It's a miserable job. Get that done. Good. Okay, man. He probably won't come back from Florida, but next week. <laughs> next week. Get to it. Yeah. Everybody. Keith Miller here. I'm um, kind of one of the quiet project members here on the beach. I, uh, one of my main contributions is helping to draw the Hollywood Bomber logo for their t-shirts. 
figured I'd pick up the camera today and do a little bit of uh, content creation. Over here we have the guys scrubbing some parts. What are you guys working on over here? We uh, are we cleaning are. these parts up because they have a lot of like paint and rust all over them. We you know? let the um, the oven spray, we sprayed those on before we went to go get thrown. So now we're back and it just comes right off. So after that we're going to place it right here and we're both going to start polishing them. Uh -huh. and get them ready for inspection. How many parts are you working on? We have four. four. Five, actually five. five. Actually five. Yes, sir. Oh, one in there. is that is that a like a before picture? What this is like a before, and then I guess okay, you can so say that's a, like an after. So yeah. this is a before, and then it's an after. So and that's all you guys are doing using the oven cleaner and yes, sir. Then just a little bit of elbow grease awesome. and yes, sir. And some scotch brights. All right, awesome. Let's take a look at what you're doing today. What was your name again? I'm Eric. Eric, what are we working on today? Uh, painting this thing here. <laughs> the uh, this part. This uh, really important part. Yeah, a very very important part. It, uh, I, we de-rusted it as much as I could. Mm -hmm. So putting a coat of super paint on it so it'll be protected. Looks like a nice application so far. Eh? Yeah, no no run so far. No bubbling, so, no running. And this is where Bill later in post will put the actual part, you know, as an overlay. Yeah. So, all right, cool. Give it a good work. I was, I was debating. I was like, you know, this thingy. This thing, but you painting the metal thingy. Yeah. yeah. So now we got Richard. Richard, what are you? What do you get yourself into today? Uh, nut plates. We're playing with nut plates. Nut plates. Rusted out nut plates for new nut plates. New nut plates, huh? Put a little tape on there just to hold the uh, rivet in, because otherwise it'll probably back out on me. Anyways, we're working the elevator area. We're trying to button this up finally. Uh huh. Make sure I have my nut, my nut plate on. Can you get a picture of the nut plate now? On the back there. Uh huh. Yeah, piece of cake. Well, thanks, Richard. You're welcome. Come back anytime. <laughs> and over here, we have a couple of new folks that are uh, new to the project. Uh, what are your names? I'm Jonathan. Jonathan? I'm Claire. And Claire. Jonathan Claire. Jonathan Claire, what are you two working on today? Uh, I, uh, we are currently sanding down the inside of this, trying to get a lot of this roughness off of the lacquer before we get around to spray painting it. I don't know where he put the spray paint somewhere. Right here. Yeah. Okay. So we can just get a nice good looking silver coat on most of this. Right. I'm gonna come up over here. I have it. I don't know how well lit it is, but we'll see. Probably not very at all. I got you. <laughs> This is a box opening. That's kind of cool. This is a porthole window. We couldn't find the old porthole window. Let's see what this looks like. I just got this. This is new old stock. So check this out. <clears throat> Plexiglass window, part number 404-18844-18445. Uh, NAS Corpus Christi, quantity one, date March 1950. Brand new old stock, Beechcraft parts. And Rom and Haas, they've been making flex the last forever. We might have to get some. Let's see if this will come off. Oh, baby. This will be, this is coming, this is like brand new. Check it out. This is cool. Oh, yeah. Pardon my, pardon my terrible. Pretty good shape. Yeah. It's brand freaking new, look at that. Check it out. Okay, now let's go over to the airplane and see if it's the right size. It's supposed to be the right size. Because the rear rear portholes are the rear portholes. Boom. Perfect. That's gonna that comes in from the back. And then we've got to find the retaining ring. That'll go on. So, so when we get the um, when we get 
the side stripped and all that, then we'll put this in with some sealant or however it goes in, and then we'll have a beautiful window there. So that's one window we're missing. Cool, man. Yeah. Another part going on. Since we're over here, and if I remember correctly, Joey and Katrina, right? Yeah. Yep. See, I remember names. <laughs> what are you guys working on? Uh, the pizza box. We're back. We're back at the pizza, pizza box. box. Pizza box? Yeah, it's just a big hole in the fuse slot. Just, yeah. It looks like a pizza, pizza box. box. <laughs> uh, we've got our doubler fitted, and we got our filler plate fitted. So now. Say that one more time without the plane going by. We got our uh, doubler fitted, our filler plate fitted. Now we're drilling holes, and next step will be uh, dimpling. And we got to figure out what we want to do on. We got two stringers that we need to piece back in here and here, but we'll do that after we do the easy stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. Okay, so episode 21, another fabulous uh, work episode. <clears throat> we got. A whole bunch of stuff done this weekend. Uh, let's go walk around the airplane and kind of show you what we're going to do or what we did. You heard Terry banging on the, uh, knocking out the uh, old nut plates and all that, a lot of rusted nut plates. So he got all of the nut plates out of both fuel bays, all the bad nut plates out. Uh, we're ready to start putting all new nut plates in to get those cover hardware all 100%. So that's kind of going on. After that, we're going to go probably paint the bays. I think we'll be in a position to paint the bays. And then we'll start uh, putting the rails in and getting that stuff going. So that's great. Had some folks in here, and pardon me for not knowing their names because I don't know everybody's name. Uh, they ended up repainting this bay in here, getting the sanded down and repainted. So this uh, landing gear bay is pretty well ready um, for uh, ready for inspection. Everything's looking real good there. And we're going to start cleaning up up in front here. But that is all looking real good. Terry and George again. We're working on this area here. Uh, they got the uh, where the fuel flow was. They got that all cleaned up. Uh, took off the access plate so we can check out the. Uh, we're going to be replacing some of the lube lines and all that stuff. So they did a bunch of cleanup in this area here. Uh, replace or remove one of the fittings. So we're getting prepped up for the um, oil filter kit. So that's good. So we we got to change a few fittings there. Uh, Joey and Katrina did a bunch of work this weekend. You saw they were working on the rudder. The rudder is done. I'll bring that. To the shop and get that painted uh, hopefully this week weather's supposed to be bad but we'll see what happens they also got the uh, old um, scoop there uh, got that dollar dime done so that's ready to be body work and prep that out on another note we're trying to match this paint and this is real serious we're trying to match this paint we think that this paint is aluma grip if anybody out there has an aluma grip color chart we can borrow we're not, we don't need it we just want to go and see if we can match this color if anybody has an aluma grip, we think it is an aluma grip. They didn't notate it in logs, but when this plane was painted, aluma grip was kind of the popular color. So if anybody has an aluma grip or possibly a DuPont Imron uh, color chart, um, an original color chart, we'd love to borrow it for just a little bit so we can get a color match on this thing. So that's killing us right now. Because that little patch, I've got to paint tan, I've got to paint the orange, and I've got to paint the whatever other color that is. It's like a brownish, maroonish color thing. Um, what else? Uh, all of the uh, valve covers are on all both engines. They're 100%. Put a new medallion uh, mount here. The other one was all cracked up. We've got that. I'm uh, going to have a surprise for you on that. Coming around here, um, nothing much going on here. Everything's pretty much same, same. Uh, pizza box repair is going along. Joey and Katrina are back on that. So they've got it. I would say they're probably at about a 80% uh, on finishing that up. Haven't stripped this, it's been cold out, so we're gonna get to that. Richard and his crew, Richard and Gary and Jim, are uh, knocking this thing out. Um, the elevator is essentially done. We have one inspection plate open, that is just for the rheostat. We just have to route wires and then install the tail light bracket. So that's the only thing holding the elevator from being a 100% installed. The elevator, or pardon me, the horizontal stabilizer cover is on uh, for good. If you look at that, it's much larger. If you're running a C45 or D18 low cabin, you don't have this. But because this is a high cabin airplane, the Super 18, it's humped up. And as a result, you have much longer transition cal. So this is on for good. And we're right now putting the lower fillets in for good. So that's going on. Um, tail wheel over here, we've got the tail wheel assembly. 
and that will be um, that's the next goal is to get this inside the uh, tail but we've got to do tail gearbox or tail gear doors get those done so that's that's another thing we have to get done but you're going to hopefully be seeing this go in here shortly once that gets in we're going to be able to move this thing so that's what's happening there um so that's kind of the that's kind of the activity for the uh for the weekend um eric also was working on the um wing spars getting those painted on the wings in the back shop so that was good, doing good so eric's got that going on um scout was she was actually building the voltage regulator mounts the new voltage regulator mounts we're getting rid of the big box that holds the carbon pile regulator and the reverse current relay all that's going away and we've got the uh, alternator regulator uh, mount covers or mount uh, that goes on the uh, side of the fuselage those uh, she built those today so that's going to be great we'll get those alodyne and then get the mounts ready to install um, so anyway that's what's going on that's what happened in this episode but let me tell you you had asked about uh, some of the folks that asked about the paint job got a jet going over some of the folks that have asked about the paint job on this aircraft what did it look like when it was delivered when it was delivered it was red basically red with a white top cabin um and with uh black and black and white trim so that's what it looks like or that's what it looked like uh, it was painted in lacquer i think probably a loose site it was a dupont number uh, the fortunate thing is the aircraft has the uh, in the logbook the uh, front page of the logbook is kind of cool they have all the paint coats when the aircraft was painted so that's totally neat so its first paint job was red with white and black trim very neat that's when williams brothers had it we don't really have any pictures of when arkansas best freightway had it we don't really have any if anybody has those and this is in the 1950s time frame and i'll put the end numbers down below of what they were but we're looking for what this aircraft may have looked like if anybody has any pictures of that so then arkansas best freightway abf had it they had it for quite a while and they painted it we think we see some green and some other colors i forget what it is i'll show you the uh, logbook on that um so that was that was notated in the logbook so it had that color paint on it of at some time frame then uh jackie cochran owned it we don't know what color it was when jackie owned it it could have been the greenish color or whatever or it could have been it could have been still red we don't know that it b could have been white when merv flew it it was white so merv flew it shortly after he bought it from jackie we don't know if the plane was painted at that time uh, by jackie white or if merv painted white but merv had a white essentially a white paint scheme with trim stripes you'll see the black nose on it the black nose was because of the weather radar that was on this aircraft kind of goofy uh setup now mind you the aircraft flew in southern california you didn't have a lot of bad what i'd call bad icing weather like you would have say in detroit so <clears throat> This aircraft had alcohol on the props and weather radar, and that was it. There was no, there were no boots ever installed in the horizontal stabilizer, the vertical fin, main wing, wing root. Never had any boots on it, which is kind of odd. The only alcohol miss or the only icing system they had were on the propellers, on the Hartzell propellers. So that's kind of strange. We're not sure what the deal is. The aircraft, as far as we know from the earliest pictures, has always had the Hartzell propellers. Uh, from the factory as a E18S. Um, so then Merv had it, it was white, he had Griffin. Now Merv is Griffin GRI FFIN, but he had a Griffin GRI FFON on his tail. He had that on it, this aircraft and he also had it on one of his later aircraft. So that was his kind of his, his deal. And then sometime after Merv owned it, possibly when it went to the company in Dallas or Las Vegas, it got this paint job and this would have had um, when it got painted, this would have had N444GR for Galaxy Resources. That's the way the school got it. That's the paint job it has on it now. What we've done here is we've removed that because the school had done some stuff with uh, putting Jackie's number back on it. So again, this is our, our, rent, our uh, support supporter board, sponsor board, but um, that's the number it had on it. That's the paint job this aircraft has had on it for probably the last going on 40 years. So this aircraft, we think was painted in about the 80s aluma grip was a pretty popular paint um so that's kind of where we're thinking it was you can see some of the older paint where the paint was this is the old red the old 1954 red again flap coves and aileron coves a lot of times on aircraft don't get painted very well 
So there's some leftovers from the 1954 paint. Um, we'll go up here, we'll show you uh, again some other areas. This is the 1954 paint, the red uh, DuPont paint. And we've got the paint codes for that. Another jet going over. So that's the story of the paint scheme. Now the neat thing is we've got a local good friend of ours, uh, Gerald Asher, he's a local artist and he has done a rendition of this aircraft in a 1954 paint scheme with Jackie's number on it as if it had been delivered in 1954 with that number on it. So that is our goal, that's our end game, that's what we'd like to see on this, this aircraft um, displayed and possibly some uh, homage to uh, Jackie and Merv on the uh, inside of the nacelle. So that's kind of the story and the history of the paint scheme on this aircraft. That's our end game, that's where we'd like to go. Uh, hopefully we'll get some donations uh, in, in uh, the out years here and uh, have the ability to do that. So that's where we are. That's what's going on the Hollywood Bomber, episode 21. Um, like, share, subscribe, notify. And hey, you in the back of the room. Yeah, down in the corner there? Yeah, that's right. Subscribe button, hit that thing. Come on, you're killing me. So take care of that. But that's it for this episode. Uh, we got this episode, we got about 300 man hours in uh, between the, the folks. So it's, uh, we're really getting it going. So appreciate it. Thanks much for watching. We'll catch you guys later. Go fly yourself. Have a great time. Hollywood Bomber Crew out. Filming me, Keith. <laughs> yeah. How do, you, how do you figure that camera out? No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Exactly. See, now I'm I'm squeezing these rivets because actually you did. <laughs> I'm squeezing the rivets because Richard Richard's trying to make me work. And you know that's not gonna happen.